Okay, so Holy Monday, this is right after Palm Sunday, where Jesus has come into Jerusalem, the triumphal entry. The people in Jerusalem think this is their Messiah, and so they're making this huge spectacle. Hosanna, Hosanna, the king has come. He's going to deliver us from the occupation of Rome. He is going to be our military leader. And Jesus, for the first kingly act, does something really unexpected. He comes into the temple, and instead of saying, I am king, and I am here to show my power, he cleanses the temple. He kicks out the money changers and the people who were selling animals to be sacrificed. And so we found some artwork that help us reflect on the events of this day and the significance of it. Um, we chose Checo de Caravaggio's piece, Christ Driving the Money Changers from the Temple, William Cooper's Divine Justice Amiable, a poem, and Mozart's Dies Irae, which was a choral section in his Requiem composition. In the painting, um, you, you can see the misuse of the temple and the um, coins and the money changers. You see Christ coming in, you know, angry, turning over tables. In the background, you see the oxen and the other things. Jesus is in light in the painting. So he is illuminated. The light, there's a single source of light and it's being cast onto Jesus. So um, it shows how righteous he is. He is set apart from these men who are in sin. And you can see that they're in shadow in the painting and kind of depicting that sin that they are caught up in. And yet, because Jesus is coming towards them, there's this light reflected onto them. And there's this hope element that begins to emerge in the painting. Looking at the painting, I'm reminded of Romans 3.23 that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And I love how the painting shows Jesus as the one standing. He's the one upright. He's the one who's holy and righteous. And everyone's falling over. Mm -hmm. And even their faces are depicting different reactions. Some have turned away completely. Some are looking at him with horror, um, some with fear. And uh, yeah, the, to me that just really demonstrates that Jesus is the one who is just. I'm gonna move over to the poem by William Cooper. The first couple stanzas really demonstrate that God is this, you know, the, the word just is capitalized in the poem. He is the attribute of justice. And he is the one who created man from dust and to the one who returns man to dust. And so his holy anger against this sin is an attribute that should cause all of us to fall to our feet and worship him. His justice is perfect because he is the very definition of justice. And so both the painting and the poem and the music reminds us of that. In the music, we have this soaring score that is kind of anxious. It's, it's putting us in a position where we're reminded of how we should fear God because he is powerful, he is mighty, and he is beyond us and above us. The music helps us remember that there should be an element where we are uh, rightly afraid of this God who could crush us and yet chooses not to. He chooses to send his son, Jesus, to bring us out of the sin and death that we deserve and into his family. Luckily, you know, he has mercy. In his justice, he could be extraordinarily uh, hard on these people. But he threw them out of the temple. He disrupted their commerce, did things like that. And so that gives us hope. You know, that in his um, anger and in his, you know, subsequent justice, there's also some redemption. And you mentioned about the light in the painting and, you know, all of this is just culminating with the music. It's just, it's just a beautiful piece together. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we see that we've got a God who cares about his people. He cares about his creation. So 
when we look at God's justice, it's not something for us to only fear, but it's also a cause to love him. Because I was seeing him, Jesus illuminated in this painting. You see his anger. But when we think about the reason for that anger, there's also love there. He loves these people who are coming to worship. And so God's justice is both retributive and restorative. It's retributive because he is so holy, he can't be around sin. There has to be a punishment for, um, for the person who is wrong, is wrong yeah. who has um, um, offended him. And yet God also is just in a restorative way where he sees the brokenness, he sees the hurt, he sees the inability of these people to sacrifice and he intends to uh, restore them to him. And that instrument of his restoration is, is his son, his begotten son, Jesus himself. Everything that we deserved was laid upon Jesus and he became sin, who knew no sin, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that we could become righteousness. Mm -hmm. And in William Cooper's poem, Back to That, um, he entitles it Divine Justice, Justice Amiable. Mm -hmm. And that amiable word means friendliness. Mm -hmm. And that's truly what Jesus came to do, is to restore our relationship with God. Um, in these stanzas, of, at the end of his poem, he says, Far from afflicting, thou art kind. And in my saddest hours, an unction of thy grace I find pervading all my powers. So as bad as our sin is, God's grace is greater. And we who are guilty are declared righteous. We don't become righteous. We just are declared righteous before God because of our faith in Jesus, because of what Jesus has done on the cross. And so all of our sins, past, present, future are dealt with and accounted for. And even more than that, we get Christ's righteousness. And there's no compromise to God's justice. He doesn't, because he you know, took away our sin, diminish his holiness in any way. It's fully satisfied. The wrath of God is completely covered or completely taken by Jesus. And that's beautiful as well because God is showing us that he is so powerful that he can still remain who he is and be completely just and divine and holy while also being completely merciful and gracious to us.